All right, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever this day may find you. It's good to uh, have you here. Anthony, welcome. Welcome back if you're just joining me uh, for the second time, which would be a great idea in my, in my opinion, but hey, what do I know? Uh, Philip, good to have you here. Anthony King, Sean Kosal, what's up? Hello again, friends, that's exactly right. Carol Pearl's in the house. Um, Jan's fully, fully active. Jan has been activated. Look out. So it's good that you guys are here. Thank you, Michelle, for that message. I always look forward to seeing, saying that, uh, you know, all of the audio and video are good. Hopefully you hear some nice music in the background. If you're joining me elsewhere, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm reading chat mainly from, uh, good old, there we go. From, uh, from Behance. All right, so we're gonna get into um, internet. Hello back, to, hello back, back to Internet City. Welcome to Internet City, everyone. It's good to have you here. Make sure you follow me below. Wade's in the house. Good to see you, Wade. What's up, buddy? Um, so yeah, we'll get into this, like all the features. I wanna get into some of the details, all the nitty gritty uh, of uh, Photoshop for um, yeah, the, the, the new features that were released in, um, well, last week, I guess. Man, it seems, seems so long ago. Either way, I'm glad you guys are here and uh, you can see this lovely. And I'm curious to know like what your favorite features are. Um, yeah, so there's a number of them. We could kind of click through. I'm just gonna kind of dive in. We're just gonna play around. Let's just play around, shall we? And again, I showed some of this on, uh, what was it? Tuesday. But uh, we've had a lot of updates to neural filters, okay? And notice that these are actually getting like smarter and smarter because we're constantly um, enhancing and uh, showing what these, like basically landscape mixer, for instance, it's getting trained on all these different landscapes on a regular basis. So when you do say, turn it on, right? And select something, and we'll just select this one here, which is gonna be the snowy scene. Um, it's comparing it to that image, but it understands what mountains are and, and snowy mountains and trees and snowy trees and all that good stuff. Uh, oh wait, did we lose the banana tool? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Now I need to check that. So you can see right in here, this is exactly what it does. It makes it, it turns it into a snowy scene. Uh, notice the strength, we can scale that back. It's gonna be like some of the snow gets melted. That's probably way too much. I noticed if you adjust the dial kind of between, honestly, around 70 and 100, that's gonna give you the best results. You can see that it's processing right down here. It's gonna melt a lot of that snow. So, except for like right in this area. Actually, there's a, there's quite a dusting, right? As we can see, which is very nice. And all I'm doing is adjusting the strength for this particular image, okay? Banana was the most important tool. Let's try uh, winter sunset just for fun. As you can see, it starts to bring in more of that sunset lighting, which looks very nice. So let's go with it. Click OK. Done. That is Landscape Mixer. So. Yeah, does Jesus talk about the banana all the time? I got to check. Let's check this. We'll go to Edit Toolbar. Hold down uh, all the keys, right? Option, Shift, Command. Um, I'm pretty sure it's all of them. Click. Oh yeah, banana tool is back. Yeah, it's still there. That is good. Right, I like this one if you're talking fun little Easter eggs. This one's my favorite one, is going into interface and then holding down the... Wait for it, maybe this is gone, there we go. Holding down shift and command you can change um, your interface from espresso or rye bread to a latte, right? To, I don't even know what that is, straight up white bread. So those are fun, uh, a little Easter eggs right in there. And again, I'm holding on the shift and command key. Looks like command key will just do it. Clicking kind of will toggle between both of those. So now you know, so that was fun.
Yes. So yeah, thank you, Carol. That is a great example. And maybe we can take an image. Uh, yeah, and I'm so sorry. Like I was, I always feel like ridiculous, but I, I guess I'm showing a little bit of teeth here. Let's go in, let's go to, let's grab something that's even more difficult. We'll go into maybe this image. Let's take a look. One where the person isn't smiling at all. It's not even this one. I don't want to go with that one. I want to go with this one here, right? So take this image. Convert it to a smart object. Uh, go to neural filters. We'll go into smart portrait and we'll adjust this based on sort of happiness. So we'll take that up a touch just so you can see. Uh, and it will add teeth because it's trained on and knows what mouths look like. It does all of that analyzing of the face compared to the thousands upon thousands of images that they already use. It gets processed in the cloud because you don't want those thousands of images on your hard drive, right? Oh, Alexander, are you telling me something new? Press about Photoshop on plus end command on the Mac. Can it do braces? Look at his sad teeth. So that's what it's currently giving me. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So they're always nice if you're smiling. We're gonna crank this up all the way for this, for this kid. Still very awkward, very awkward. Uh, I'm gonna pass on that, just click cancel, <laughs> right? So there we go, we're getting trained on all that. Um, but <clears throat> I wanted to kind of focus on an image like this that needs a lot of touch up, right? So let me show you this. Are we ready for this, Carolyn and Marsha? And let me move this other stuff over. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Yeah, that mouth was ridiculous. Hey, uh, Wakwas, good to see you. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna show you what we also updated. And I just posted a video on this, but Camera Raw Filter. We updated that, it's now Camera Raw, uh, what, version 14? And there's a lot we can do in here. First off, if you're not using Camera Raw to touch up, then you should be, right? So again, I'm just clicking in. Notice I can always adjust the sample area. This one is actually pretty difficult, to be honest with you. Uh, because there's a nice gradation with the face, that lighting. So it can only sample like from so far away. So move that down, make sure we don't get that spot. But check this out, even as I select, let's go in here, let's just select uh, this spot right here, okay? So I'm gonna click there, it samples from the area right next to it, which I can pull out, but I can even adjust, let's see if I can adjust the size. I can't adjust the size, so let's actually delete that. Let's make this much larger, we'll be able to see it better. We'll make it larger like that, click, it samples, and the feather is actually dynamic and so is the opacity. So if I decide I wanna move this, the feather should be actually dynamic and change when I move it. So anyways, I just think that's interesting because again, it's non-destructive, it's dynamic, it samples from other areas. I can click or click and drag. It doesn't have to be just this brush. I'm just kind of cleaning this up. This is not uh, new, but I think it might be new for people that are not doing sort of a lot of touch-up work, right? So come in here, we'll just sample those different areas, kind of clean this up, right? We're just clean up the things that'll go away uh, within a couple weeks with the right treatment, I guess, shall we say, right? Regardless, just know that you guys are beautiful people. I was this kid at one point in my life. I think we all were, so. Sure, there's plenty of sympathy. And let's just do that. Man. Cleaning it up, there we go. Uh, hold down the, you can click on another tool or hit P, P will hide that. So here's your before, let's go back over here. Before and then after, right? So we've cleaned it up. Uh, again, just jumping in here. Again, show you new camera raw 14. I'm going to just go into basic. We'll go down here. We'll take down the texture, right? So that smooths out some of the skin tones, right? Take down the texture. And then I usually take up the detail, 
right? So the detail will sharpen, but won't sharpen up the smooth areas. So the eyes will typically get a little bit more crisp, right? The nose, the eyebrows, but it typically doesn't just globally make everything sharper. Okay, how's everyone doing? Oh good, Chris Olsen uses Camera Raw every day, so you know all about this. So Camera Raw, that's a great question for everyone. Camera Raw or Lightroom Classic, what's better? I'm always using Photoshop, so I'd say Camera Raw. Uh, Lightroom Classic is gonna have um, probably more, I don't know. Honestly, it's personal preference. It's uh, largely the same technology in both. But let's get into this. I wanna get into um, kind of brightening up the face. So in this case, I'm gonna use a mask. So this is brand new. Right up here, we'll click, we'll hold this down, we'll go to say brush. Right, first off, look at this, select subject is in there. So I can, I can actually do a select subject. It's gonna go through, calculating the images, selects this subject. Let's do an invert, and then let's turn off the show overlay, and we'll take down the exposure. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of darkening the background so our subject stands out more, okay? So I did a select subject, and then I inverted it, okay? So that works well, subjects standing out more. It's, this is the select subject icon right there, a little, little face on the guy's face, it's weird. Uh, click right here, we're gonna do a brush. So I'm gonna just kinda brush in and we're gonna just kinda brighten up some areas. It's gonna paint with red, just, and this is giving me the selection areas. So I'll kinda just do a couple little clicks uh, we'll be aware of the flow. I need to take the flow down a lot, to be honest with you. Let's just undo that, actually. So I think that flow is way too strong. So brush, flows about 43. Just kind of doing a little bit of that. And so we're painting with that. I can turn off that overlay, and then we'll just bring up the exposure. So we're like brightening up the skin, as you can tell. But this is the cool part, it's like, yeah, I can kind of brighten that up. Oh, I need to get more spots. Well, guess what, right over here, we can add. We'll click there and we'll add uh, more brushing to this. And now I'm adding this new brush. And again, just kind of painting. Let's crank this up even more so we could see it. But again, just kind of painting right in here. That's a little hot, that's okay. Let's brighten up the eyes. I'm just kind of having some fun here, if that's okay. All right, adding to this. Uh, mask. Does that make sense? You can press alt option to open a copy or press shift to open object. Oh, okay, cool. You can press alt option, alt slash option, whichever. Yeah, it's the same key depending on your, oh, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're brightening up his face. We're adding in can subtract masks. That's what's going on here. All in one, and it's cool that we can play with all of those settings. Again, I don't know if I did the best job, but we're just brightening up his face. That's all. Uh, what else is in here? Brand new, if you look off to the side, we'll click here. We have presets, right? Brand new premium presets. You could roll through these, but you could see a number of them. Uh, I think the food, landscape, a lot of these might be new to you if you're not aware of it. They all could be new, right? We'd probably go into sort of like medium skin tone, but we'll kind of roll through this and you could see just the different effects that you get. I really like this PM Portrait Medium 8. Uh, looks pretty good. I just added it to my favorite and then we can kind of roll through these and compare it to my other favorites. Oh, that's a little bright. I'm gonna go with the uh, Portrait Deep Orange is what this one is, right? With that selected, we'll click OK, call it a day. Cool. Red eyes better than pink eye. Mm. <clears throat> no truer words have been spoken. Let's play with this a little bit more because we noticed that we use neural filters to give this guy a smile, right? It was, it was like, OK. I actually would like more control over it uh, than what that was given me. So we'll jump into liquify in this case. And again, this is not a new feature, but it kind of goes with the process of working on this lovely image. How are all my lovely people doing out there? Right over here, let's go ahead and analyze this face. Click, 
analyzes it. It's like, hey, you wanna, you wanna edit the mouth? Yeah, I kind of do. We could stretch it out a little bit, but more importantly, we just wanna turn it up, turn up the ends ever so slightly, right? We're just getting, giving him a slight smile. It's just better than those weird teeth that you saw earlier, right? It was just a little weird, right? So that's all we did. A nice little tilt to the mouth. And uh, again, you can make any other adjustments. For me personally, like sometimes, I don't know if it's like, I don't know if one eye when it's closer to the lens or whatever, sometimes my eyes are not like, are they the same size? They are, but sometimes with photos, that's a common thing, especially if you're like blinking. Uma corns in the house, what's up Uma? So twirl this down, we can see liquify camera raw filter. We can compare this with the original. Here's the original, right? Just dreary day, cloudy. It's just you, one of those days where you just wanna stay inside. Turn that on, sure enough. Uh, happier, sunnier day, as you can tell. And I would still wanna jump in and do like a little bit more cleanup uh, on the face, if you don't mind. It's a little tricky in there, right? We could easily overwork this, but you get the idea. All right, Laura Staniva, good to have you here, welcome. So we did that, let's have some more fun with this. You guys know how to work with Camera Raw 14, it's a brand new. I'm gonna switch over to the iPad really fast as well, show you a couple things there, and um, yeah, we're just gonna cover all of our bases is the plan. And then, uh, yeah, I'll share this with you guys. Uh, okay, you're gonna have to give me a second. <laughs> give me one second, because I'm trying to find a raw image to open up. Okay, looks like I've found one. All right, so let's switch over. Here I'm Photoshop on my iPad. What's everybody doing? So many amazing tools, that is right. And look at these, so I just, I'm clicking import and open, selecting from my camera roll. Oh gosh, get all these fun images. Those are not quite what I needed. Let's just switch my screen back. Give me one second. I'm sorry, everyone. Ah, I think I found them. Fantastic, let's switch over really fast. Boom, boom, we're there. Uh, let's grab. This image, which is really dark. It's a raw file. So I'm showing you that there's camera raw support. You're not necessarily gonna have all the controls that you could see in Photoshop on the iPad. We can see this image, I can click auto, right? It automatically brightens it up and I can always increase that exposure right and we can see sort of what it was like before and after right so there's your before and then your after right we can twirl down into more of these right we can add say a little bit more clarity we're going to start to see some of that noise back there but again i'm just changing and uh manipulating some of these properties as you can tell uh, on this ARW file. I don't even know what type that is, to be honest with you. We'll take the highlights down because we're losing some of that sky, but we'll drop that down like so. Make sure it has enough sharpness, but isn't too detail oriented. And uh, we will go into vignette, give it a little vignetting, okay? 
done and done. Import as a smart object. I'm gonna import this as a smart object and I'm gonna show you what happens. Good to see everyone. Colby, it's good to see you, man. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out, my friend. All right, so here we are. This image is like, is perfect. Jeez, it's so nice. But I am gonna use the Spot Healing Brush just to show you what happens when you start using Spot Healing Brush or really any brush on a smart object because I love how um, Photoshop on the iPad is smart enough to know that if I wanted to remove this reflection and I, I technically I can't draw on a smart object layer. Boy, I really need to make that brush bigger. But it adds that new layer. See how it made layer one? And yeah, let's bring up that size. And just remove it like so. That's all. Oh, boy, Paul, ouch. What are you doing, my friend? Let's try that one more time. There we go. Ready? One fell swoop. Swoosh. There we go. It's giving me some weird little fractals there, but you get the idea. <sighs> there we are. Let's play with this some more. Quite frankly, I like that. Uh, also, what we have in here is dodge and burn. Brand new. Again, show you new features. Uh, you know, do I need to go into all this detail? If I click on it, like, it actually is. Did it just rasterize it? What is going on? Anyways, I'm actually brightening up or sort of dodging this tree right up here. I'll come down here. And again, I'm just kind of brightening it up and bringing it out, bringing out this foreground a little bit using dodge, right? So that's all I'm doing. Just increasing the brightness right there. And uh, yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, so Mirror Lake. All right, yes, yeah, so we got plenty of noise in here. Uh, what I'd ultimately do with this is I would jump in and uh, maybe do quick selection, object selection. We also have magic wand. This is also brand new as well. So I can come in if you wanna use it. Oops. Let's try to pinch in on this. There we go. Magic wand, let's crank this up a little bit, the tolerance. Boom. Just selected this whole area, as you can see. Mask it, turn that off, disregard that layer but i just used magic wand on this where i can then throw some type in here say behind that tree so it's floating on the lake and doing all that fun stuff cool camp crystal lake watch out huh cody bear you're funny all right let's get back into it I'm so tempted to clean this up, by the way. Really want to clean up this tree and add some text. But again, I'm just showing you the all the new features. I just, knowing me, I just start designing and doing all that stuff. Let's do this for Reverb Mic Camp.
all caps. Bam. Wait for it. I just did the cardinal sin of um, scaling the text. I literally just stretched out that text. But you get the idea. Cool, done, and done. Uh, from here, this is a brand new file. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna share it right up here. So this is new. It's actually available on the desktop as well. So we will click. We will change this to anyone with the link can comment. Hey, save a copy. Why not? Right? Uh, send link. We're going to copy this link and I'm going to be able to share it with everyone else. And you can see off to the right, I'm going to get comments on the uh, right hand side and on my desktop. Cool. <sighs> Let's paste this in. Hopefully it pastes in. Come on, baby, do me right. Let's switch back over. Copy. All right, I'm trying to copy from one Mac to another. It's not quite letting me do that. Nonetheless, we're gonna close this file anyways. And uh, yeah, we'll switch to my desktop. And before I do that, just so you know, you can find all this information on the main screen. Ooh, there we go. So right in here, click view. You can see we talked about raw right in here. Yes, we can deal with smart objects now, right? Not editing them necessarily, but we can manipulate them. So if you're working going from desktop to iPad, you're gonna be doing just fine. There's dodge and burn. Uh, share for commenting is what we're doing right now, right? Talked about the magic wand as well. You guys get it. Canvas projection, this will screw you up. If you do any sort of present presenting from an iPad and then you use Photoshop, you're like, what happened to my interface? It's because it's actually projecting your screen. So that's the whole thing, right? You get the idea. Let's, we have that closed. Now we can go to my desktop and I'm gonna open this up. <sighs> when is Adobe Canvas coming out? I wish I knew. The fact of the matter is, I do not know. Ah, okay. So yes. We can then open up that file and do all that fun stuff with it. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. Also wanted to point out, you can do the same thing on the desktop. Again, this is just, we're talking about new stuff. Exactly what you saw on my iPad right over here. Save a as a cloud document first. That's what it's telling me to do initially. It's like, hey, Paul, you have to save it as a cloud document. Here we'll call it mountains. Once it is saved, we'll go back up here. And now you can say, see that it says, hey, you know what? Go ahead and invite others to see it. Oh, error uploading link setting. I'm so sorry, sometimes this happens. So either way, let's copy that link. Let's paste it into a browser window and uh, continue on our merry little way. Boom, boom, boom. 
Rocky, Rocky Montez Carr. Rocky, you came just in time because we did this yesterday. Uh, yes, it is kind of throwing an error now, not to worry, but basically we did this yesterday. Rocky was able to comment on, uh, actually this, let's see if I can find it. I will open up that exact same file, and this will be an interesting experiment, because we kind of go through, since that link isn't working necessarily, it actually shouldn't affect us. Let's take a look. Here we go. So this... Uh, I sent out yesterday so we can see right down here Rocky there you are would be cool to see some other color versions as well Which is why I added those other colors But you can see all of those comments kind of rolling through if you go to this cloud document You could always right-click and then reveal on a web that way I find that to be just a fun little shortcut being able to access that file assuming you have all the login info so many different I have two different logins and both of have both of them have certain um, permissions which makes it such a pain to be honest with you so I'm like which all right everybody ready to write this down just kidding it would change anyway and we're back and you can see i'd add some flowers oh i love it thank you laura appreciate it so much love the great i think some more life by adding some ivy with flowers growing up the arm can we please do all of this stuff right look uh shalija says add some stars yeah i want to do all this stuff I think somebody else was mentioning, can you add more butterflies? Brighten it up. Love the concept. Change the angle arm. So cool that we can go ahead and... I don't even have to read in here. This is what you guys would see. I just jump in here and I take a look at the comments right in here and roll with it. So yeah, from there, let's go to libraries. Stars. And let's talk about gradients because I want to talk about, you know, sort of bringing in some new things. Uh, let's grab this. Why not? We'll try this image. There's some stars that we might be able to hint at, which will be beautiful. Uh, we'll grab this image too, just because I'm indecisive. Scale that up and rotate it. Oh, that these have the wa that one has the watermark on it. So yeah, I do not own that image, but I do own this one. So this works out well. Take this, what are we gonna do? We're gonna play some blend modes really fast and we're gonna use some new features. So I'm gonna jump in here. Maybe we just wanna keep the light parts. So all the stars would mean changing that to screen or any one of anything in this area, right? Between these two lines is gonna keep the light end of that, uh, of those colors. Ooh, overlay looks good too, boom. All right, notice how you might not like having these extra elements on here. If you just close your comments panel, right? They disappear. Cool. Cool. Now let's take a look at the gradients really fast. Oh, let's add some flowers and some more butterflies. Can we do that, please? I think I have some more in here. Chip, chip. There you go. Again, this makes, this makes Adobe Live really fun because now, again, actually I'll paste this link in there one more time. I'm gonna paste this link, copy. Feel free to keep the comments coming because we'd really like, you know, collaborate on this now, which is great. Some will be smaller, I get it. They all kind of need to be at different angles. Luckily, I have those as well. And checking the time, I have about 20 minutes. Awesome. Yeah, I have all the butterflies. Drag those on, take this one, let's flip it horizontally. Maybe this one already landed on the arm and we could still have the vine climbing up as well. Wait for it. 
Okay, so you ready for this really fast? These are just pro tips, which is just kind of fun. So I have this butterfly. Guess what? I could swap out the butterfly wings. I could turn this into an entirely different uh, butterfly because um, this happens to be a smart object. So I'll just double click on it. Here's this smart object and that contains additional smart objects because each wing is a smart object. So if I double click on this wing, sure enough, here it is. Let's change this because off to the side again, I have say this, uh, even this one might be kind of cool, like this wing, right? So we've gone from blue to uh, sort of this auburn, really cool. I see skulls and bones in here, which I'm into. Uh, maybe we try this yellow one would look good as well. Okay, but we'll go back. We can see we swapped it out. We'll go do the same with this blue one. And again, they actually could be exactly the same. I don't know why I didn't use the same smart object, but I, I wanted it to be a little bit different. But you can see now we have an entirely new butterfly. All, all I need to do is save this, click back to my original, and then it gets swapped out. And here's my new butterfly. I like the yellow because it kind of stands out more. It gives it a little bit more punch, uh, which is great. And you get the idea. All right, everyone. Cool, cool, cool. Let's move on. Let's move on to the gradients because I'm talking about new features. This is going to be really subtle, but let's take a look at this. We have um, this lovely gradient in the background. Let's move it to the top. We'll use a shortcut key. Shift, command, uh, closing bracket brings it to the top. And I'm using this lovely gradient. Right, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Let's change this, and maybe we'll even start fresh. Because off to the side, we'll go to gradients. You guys know I love using gradients. Let's go with this bright one, okay? Um, and let's change this to classic, but this is what it used to look like. So we've refined all the gradients. So you'll find this new method. There's classic, the way it was originally, linear and perceptual. So let me try to zoom out and I'm gonna change it from classic. Actually, let's do this. Let's take this, let's duplicate this layer. We'll move, we'll add a mask in here. If that's okay, I better hurry. Boom. So we're gonna have this side on the right is gonna be perceptual. That is so interesting. Classic. So on the left side is classic. And on the right side is perceptual. So you'll notice right in here, there's going to be a more subtle gradient between two colors, right? There's going to be just a better transition between colors. Uh, they're just smoother gradients. If you notice on the uh, right side, it's, you know, like look at these purples in here that we're not quite getting. Um, we wouldn't get previously. Let's try a couple other colors, by the way. Change this to, let's go to my two favorite colors. Let's try these two. We might be able to see it a lot. Maybe this one. I don't know. Yeah, let's go with that one. And again, you can just kind of see, it's gonna hopefully get rid of any sort of line. I'm trying to get rid of that harsh transition, that line. So that's the problem. Okay. All right. Make it pop, people. Add some flowers. Got it, got it. But now we could go ahead and pick our gradient, say, hey, you know what, no, I do like this one using the new gradient effects. Drag that down to the bottom. Maybe just play with some more colors and see what works. The issue is the hand, it's really changing a lot based on this overlay layer. So we'll change that to screen. There we go. 
and even add a little bit more contrast. Cool. Cool. Alrighty. Looks good. Let's check my comments because I heard some noises. Can you fill with a moon? Huh, yeah, why not? Did you see that I actually had a moon over here already? Or was it just kind of begging for it? Here's the moon. Maybe we try that instead of the circle. We'll get rid of that ellipse. And there's your sort of moon. We will scale it back as well. Okay, so we can kind of go through, change this to overlay. We'll just kind of give a, give a hint of the moon back there just so it's not so distracting, okay? And that was, uh, yeah, compliments of Alexander. Uh, need, needs UFOs shaped like Oreos in space. This is where I'm going to be art director and say no. We're not doing <laughs> UFOs in the background, you know? Because this is all about new beginnings. That's the name of this file, right? It's about optimism. It's not about UFOs. Uh, placement of skulls, got it. Add some flowers, I always want to. Add 19 dinosaurs. This is getting to be crazy. <laughs> But hey, I'm always willing to throw in a skull. So let's take a look. Why not? There you go. I think the uh, <laughs> UFOs were ridiculous, but the skulls are not for some reason. Again, this is, this is where I'd start to blend the moon and the skull together. So we can see that hint of a skull. We'll clip it. Right? And now you get to see that like little hint of a skull in the moon just for kicks. Cool. All right. Friendly aliens, you guys are just being like, so creative today. So creative. Right? But that looks pretty good. We're kind of mixing our metaphors, right? We don't want to throw a ton of things at this. Uh, but I'd say that looks good. And let's take a look at what's new if you are curious as to finding out what's new right up here boom boom typically will jump out um working with illustrator artwork in photoshop which is awesome quick selections is something we'll talk about actually right now sharing files we're already doing neural filters we're working on okay maybe we'll steal those mountains over here right we use these let's close some of these other files just so we're not getting too overwhelmed Get rid of that goofball. And yeah, let's just take these two. Ugh. And let's steal uh, these mountains. In fact, before I even drag them over, I'm gonna grab some flowers, okay? So that's what we'll do. I'm gonna grab these mountains first off. Um, I can find new skies with stars and all that things, all that stuff from sky replacement, but I already have the stars back here. So I really just need to take this and uh, yeah, let's um, max it out really fast. We'll use the object selection tool, right? And I'm gonna change this to rectangle. I'll turn off object finder because I just wanna click and drag over that bottom part. Right, and then it selects everything I need to select. Heck, let's just use our regular marquee. Let's not make it any more complex than it needs to be. Boom, boom, boom. Getting all the features into one document, and let's move on. Uh, so there's a smart filter on there. We got our schoon in the background. Jack Watson, what's up, Jack? How you doing? Happy Friday indeed. Oh, new filter has exceeded the timeout limit. That's fine. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go nuts on this. Boom, boom, done. Boom, we're back. We're back, everybody. 
keep those mountains small, the base, like so. And there we have it. And again, we kind of play with the some of the blend modes down at the bottom. We just want them to be very subtle, that's the thing. And we'll steal some of that color in a second. Let's just keep that at darken. All right, so let's move on. That's looking good. I'll save this file so it's gonna update that link so everything's gonna change. Uh, mask all objects is killing you. So, interesting. Let's take a look at that. So here's some flowers. Of course we want some flowers in it. We'll take this, we'll take even like this file if we want to, or this one, right? A couple different options. But again, just going over here to my object selection tool, I turned it off a second ago, but we're turning on object finder. So it's analyzing the image right now, right? And now I can just roll over and it's going to automatically sort of select each one of these, whichever flower I want. So I click, it selects it. I can do a command C, command V, paste that on a new layer. So that's all I'm doing is kind of extracting each one of these flowers. Let's try this more complex layer. Since this is already turned on, it's gonna analyze it each and every time. So again, if I wanna snag um, this flower and maybe I'll hold down a shift key, let's get this one, let's get this one, let's get this one, uh, you get the idea, right? We'll take this, let's actually not do that last one. But let's mainly take those, uh, those four, right? and then mask them. Now let's see what happens, and this is something I have not done yet, on this layer. We're gonna right click, and let's say for instance, again, there's lots of objects here. Let's see what happens if I just wanna extract all the flowers into different masks. So let's try mask all objects. Clicking right there, we'll watch this folder. It's doing something, it's doing something. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's analyzing that whole image, it's extracting them all, and it ends up extracting about 18 different items. Wowee. <laughs> Let's turn that off. Where is everything, by the way? Okay, there we go. So here, here we have all these different folders. It doesn't duplicate that layer, that would be like, it would make it really huge. But if I take this, put it in this folder. I'm just gonna do this really fast. See, can I drink? Yeah. So I'm curious, you said that uh, this is killing you. Mask all layers, kind of curious as to what you mean by that, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Sounds bad if it's killing you. Yeah, maybe you should stop doing it. See all the flowers starting to get filled in. But you see, that's where everything is. One more layer, that's almost everything. Cool, so let's turn off some. You get the idea. Hello, Judith. All right, we could start over. All right, Judith. We got to start from the top. Judith just, just got here. Welcome, Judith. But okay, we will we will go ahead and start right now. So, but here I've extracted these flowers. These are the ones I want to use. Bam, bam. Let's get rid of that mountain. I'm working on this file. And like what was mentioned in the comments, we can bring them on over and really just make a mess of this whole thing. Because this is what sometimes design by committee looks like. If this was designed by committee, there would be UFOs in here, there'd be multiple skulls. I think there would be 19 dinosaurs specifically and uh, all sorts of things. But again, there's some, there's some lovely flowers, mainly showing you how to extract those items. Uh, yeah, Norsh, I know, I feel ya. So I'd love to put some vines in here. Ah, oh, now we're getting away from the features, but still having some fun, because yeah, I would totally wrap a vine around the arm, because uh, that just sounds like a great idea. Here's a vine right here, boom. 
So we tried the flowers. They didn't quite work. We will try a little puppet warp on this vine and kind of have it wrap around like so. Kind of like that. Okay, do that. We'll do our masking and all that fun stuff. But I do thank you guys for joining me today. We have uh, Jason Levine up next. Jason's going to be doing all sorts of fun stuff. I don't know what exactly, but uh, you could see if you just scroll down. If you're on... Vert. Behance, uh, the schedule's below. All right, so... We can play all we want, have that wrap around. We have some fun things going on. I did want to talk about Illustrator, so I'm gonna open this up, show you this really fast. I have five minutes left. New project! <laughs> Sean, it's so inspiring. I love it. I'm just like, new project? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> let's, let's make a new project, everyone. <laughs> he he. All righty. All right, so here we are. Um, I could open up something, actually, rather than designing anything. I get it. I want to be inspiring too, but it's probably going to take too much time. You want the meta logo? All right, it's just, I'm not finding anything on my desktop after two seconds of looking, but let's take this for instance. We'll do a fun hipster shape. Maybe we'll do multiple moons. I don't know. But at least we'll get this started with just a circle. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make the circle white. Uh, actually, no. Let's just change the color because I want you to see this happen. And we will do a Scorpio. Scorpio. Does that look right? I hope so. But I'm just typing some text in here just to show you what's going to happen with text as we bring it into. Um, Photoshop and uh, we can take a look at that conversion. Change that to white. And let's do, say for instance, a fun burst in the center. There's your lens flare, by the way. Oh, so sparkly. We'll take this, we're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste this into Photoshop. As we paste it in, this is our new option, which is layers. We'll click right here, it's gonna preserve all the attributes. It might rasterize things um, if it needs to. So we'll click OK, let's paste those in. Sure enough, it's like, hey, you know what? We do need to rasterize some of those things because guess what? We're not Illustrator, we're Photoshop. We don't have all of that stuff, but we're still gonna maintain the integrity of the design and uh, bring in that content. So what it did over here uh, gives me this layers file. Here's my lens flare, here's the text that got rasterized, and here's the ellipse, which happened to be that ugly, rusty red color Notice how I can go ahead and like change the color of the ellipse. Hold on, that's not how you do it. Change the color of the ellipse to white. Even changing the fill, just to give you an idea. Yeah, so that's what's happening. Brings in that actual object, vector object. And you guys get the idea. Checking the time down to my last couple minutes. I like that everything came in as individual layers because this doesn't didn't get translated, right? This lens. And I think somebody might have asked for a lens flare in comments, but now that it's in here, I can change this to uh, screen would probably be good. But here's that lens flare from uh, Illustrator. And we can add that highlight, whatever we need to do. Cool, does that make sense? Uh, okay. Also, when you paste things in, I'm going to paste this in again, but this time I'm going to click here and I'm going to click learn more. So this is where you find out what gets translated, what doesn't, maybe what gets rasterized, and how you can kind of 
you know, change your content accordingly depending on your workflow, okay? So this is all the stuff that gets rasterized, and this is just for today, because we are actively working on this. Um, and then some shapes come in as non-live shapes as well. Cool, cool. All right, so there we have our lovely design by committee, apparently. And this looks about right. This is typically what happens. Actually, it's not that bad. I wanna congratulate everybody. You all rock. I think we did a fine job for the time we had. Um, and don't forget about comments and all that good stuff. I'd say that looks pretty good, again, for the, for the time we spent on it, learning new features. And uh, I just appreciate you guys hanging out with me this, this fine Friday. This, you, this is what you guys, you guys make Fridays fun, I must, I must say. I must say. Um, yeah, so more later on, I wanted to kind of jump out and show new, ma make sure I referenced everything. I didn't get into all of the neural filters, but try those out. There's colorize. There also is harmonization. Harmonizing two images, making them look like they, they exist within the same world, which is awesome. Has to be one of my favorites. So there is that. Stick around. Jason's up next. It'll be super fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me uh, on this lovely Friday. So see you uh, more next week. And uh, thank you, everyone. More skulls, always. Always, man. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for Jason. I'm going to have it on. I'm going to be creeping in chat as well. So see you guys soon. Thanks so much.